Good afternoon. My name is Matt Ryan. I'm with the University of Missouri. I'm a research associate in the Cropping Systems Project in southeast Missouri at the Delta Center. So we do different work on a variety of different crops. We'll be in cotton and rice, corn, soybeans, wheat, grain, sorghum, you name it, we work in it. Uh, what I'm going to talk to you about today is a crop water use app that we've developed in conjunction with the state climatologist for an irrigation scheduling. Essentially it is a water uh, balance scheduling system for that can be used for a variety of different crops. So as we all know irrigation is a huge investment. We, uh, we put a lot of money into, into pumping costs and we're, we're pumping out of aquifers that in many places are considered a finite resource. So optimizing that irrigation is important and we know the proper irrigation management is key. Now if you go here onto the uh, University of Missouri Extension website, it gives you a variety of different ways to, to learn more about your irrigation, uh, learn more about the economics, and what I'm focusing on right here is the water use and scheduling portion of the, of the website. Now here we've got a variety of different tools that you can use to, to schedule your irrigations to make your irrigations more efficient. I'm going to talk about three of them today, two of them just briefly. Uh, the first one being the Woodruff chart. Uh, most of you have probably seen this, it's been around for a number of years. Uh, this is a pen and paper based model that you're going to download from the website. You're going to put in your crop, your planting date, and it's going to project water use curves for your crop. And essentially you're going to go through with a pencil and add in any irrigations or <clears throat> precipitation that you get throughout the season. And your, your goal is to stay above this red line, which is your maximum allowed depletion for that crop, that planting date, and that particular date and time. Now this green line is essentially your saturation point. So every time you irrigate, which is this vertical bar here throughout this line, it won't go above that above the green line would be runoff in that situation. So this is, this is the old model. The, the pen and paper model, people have been using it, like I said, for years. This is the Arkansas Irrigation Scheduler. It's been around for several years as well. The, the inputs that you're going to have here, you're going to input your evapotranspiration. You're gonna input your precipitation and your irrigation. Now this is a, this is a fine app. Uh, it does require a few more inputs, like I said, putting in your own ET values, uh, whether you get them from a predicted website, such as the FRET system that's been developed, or if you have an ET gauge, or you know a, of a local weather station that you can get ET from. So it's, it's a good app as far as user friendliness. It's got a bit of a learning curve, so it can be a little tough to, to figure out how to put all those values in and to get this irrigation date down here at the bottom. Now I'm going to go into a little more detail about the, the crop water use app that we've developed, but I'm just going to hand, you, hand out some pros and cons, okay? As far as the amount of technology required, okay? The Woodruff chart, again, pen and paper. You're going to download that and set it with uh, your own irrigations. You're going to write in the precipitation all by itself. The irrigation scheduler is going to require the use of a PC. And the crop water use app can either be done on the, on the PC or on your cell phone. As far as user friendliness, as I said before, Woodruff charts are fairly easy. Pen and paper, you're, you're ready to go. The irrigation schedule takes a little bit of a learning curve. Uh, and to figure out your own ATs and things like that, you're going to have to find those resources on your own. It's not going to put it in there for you. Uh, crop water use app, we've, we've developed it to be as, as easy as possible as user friendly as possible. In that, and part of this user friendliness is that it automatically enters your ET based on your weather station data and it's going to uh, enter your rainfall based on those weather station da data as well. All right, now essentially I'm gonna show you this picture down here. You're looking at three different ways to skin the same cap, okay? So they're all water balance models and they're all gonna work in a similar fashion. Okay, 
So as far as the crop water use app is concerned, in 2015, we started with 178 fields. We've gone, as of August 2nd last year, we've gone up to about 398 fields in Missouri. Uh, that also includes a little bit in West Tennessee and Northeast Arkansas. Now, I asked for a show of hands of Missouri farmers in here, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that's probably fairly low. Now, that's not to say that this app can't be helpful on your farm, okay? As I said before, we've got several in Northeast Arkansas and, and Western Tennessee that use it, but you could also use this in Texas with a little bit of work, okay? So, we use the MUAG Weather Network. All these yellow dots that you see here are weather stations that we have access to. Real-time weather data that's going to log precipitation, it's going to log temperature, solar radiation, and short crop ET, which is what we use for this model, okay? goes into a modified Penman Monteith equation that is, is different for each of the crops based on the water use of that crop at that particular growth stage. So if you log on to the Extension website and look for this, uh, search for this MP800, that gives you a complete rundown of the crop water use app. It's going to tell you all the different tips and tricks that you can use, the, what allowable deficits you should use, what rooting depths you should use. It's going to go into to more of a detail than I can do in the, the 20 minutes that I have today. So if you log on to the website and you're, you're, more, you're curious about it, you can get all the information there. We also have a number of YouTube videos. This is Dr. Gene Stevens, his, uh, his YouTube channel, and he's gone into every aspect of the crop water use app and how to manipulate the, the app to, to get your irrigation scheduling. So all that is located on YouTube. Just search for the, the crop water use app, and you, su you can subscribe to Gene's uh, channel, and as any updates come in, they'll, they'll email you and let you know about that. So in order to register for the app, you're going to go to cropwater.org. That's the main website. It will redirect you to this uh, either on the PC or the cell phone, okay? But if you're, this is your first time signing into everything, it's generally easier to start on the PC and then log in on the cell phone. And just because of the, the sheer f fact that you're going to be typing some information in, you're going to be selecting a lot of different things. So. We, we like to direct people to the PC first to get everything set up. Now, once you set all your fields up in the, in the app, they'll be there indefinitely. So you can come back, if you put everything in in 17, you can come back in 18 and all your fields are still gonna be there. All your information is still gonna be there for you. So you'll start out, you'll enter the name of your first field and you can put in your lat long in, uh, in decimal degrees. If you don't know that, essentially you're looking for the centroid of the field, just like you'd hand uh, a co-op to, to go out and apply fertilizer. But if you don't know the, the lat long of the field, you can use the, the find location using Google app or Google Maps. That's going to bring up this view right here. This is a field here at the, uh, at the Delta Center back in southeast Missouri. We just found that on Google Maps. You can either click it with the mouse or touch it with your finger if you're on your phone and select use the marker coordinates, okay? And that's going to select your field for you. So wherever you name that field, you select that and it's going gonna, it's gonna to put those GPS coordinates in. <clears throat> Second thing it's going to ask you for is your soil type. Now there's a number of different ways that we can do that. Uh, we generally ask that you use the web soil survey and select the predominant soil type for the field. You can also use the five digit mapping number from the NRCS, that's, that's easy to do. One of the things I like to use, uh, if, you, if you're not very familiar with this, there's an app called Soil Web on your phone. And if you're standing in the field, you can click Find My Soil and it will tell you the, the NRCS mapping unit for that particular location, wherever you're standing. Uh, it's, a, it's an app from UC Davis, works wonders. It's, it's a wonderful app. So, uh, if you're not, if you don't want to use this, you can you can also use that that app as well. So once you get your soil type in, it's gonna it's gonna want your crop, it's gonna want your planting date, and it's gonna want the rooting depth that you're you're looking for. Now this is some 2016 data that we put in uh, to find. We're trying to validate which rooting depths would be most. 
the, to, to optimize the rooting depth for each particular crop. So this is cotton, and we used a variety of triggers. Zero here would be non-irrigated cotton. Six would be a six inch rooting depth, all the way down to a 30 inch rooting depth. So the deeper the rooting depth, the more we have essentially in the checkbook balance. Okay, so we'd be irrigating less often. These blue numbers here are the number of times that we irrigated. You can see down here in the, in the six inch rooting depth, we irrigated six times in 2016. These three in the deeper rooting depths, we only irrigated once. And as you can see, cotton doesn't like wet feet. So the, the fewer irrigations that we had, we also had a few rains this season. The fewer irrigations we had, the better yield we had, okay? As you can see, even our, our non-irrigated did better than the six and 12 inch rooting depths. So our target uh, for cotton is, is somewhere in this 18 to 30 range. We're gonna do more locations and uh, this season to, to validate that because you know this is one location one year. <clears throat> So once you get your fields put in, you've got two different ways that you can look at them. You've got the field status right here and the farm summary. Field status is a, an in-depth monitoring for a particular field. And you can swipe through these on your phone and look at each individual field. But it's gonna tell you your planting date, the soil texture that you chose, and the rooting depth that you chose. So all the inputs that you've had, you can, you can review all those. And, uh, gives you essentially a soil water balance here, which we like to consider this kind of like a gas tank on your car, okay? So if, if you've just irrigated, your, your balance is gonna be way up here, okay? And as ET for each day after that irrigation or that, or that rainfall, that balance is gonna go down, okay? This red bar here is your maximum allowable depletion, okay? For most crops, that's about 50%. If you were doing this in furrow irrigated rice, I would shoot more for 30% depletion, okay? Just because that's a, such a water <coughs> heavy crop that we, you generally irrigate it more often, okay? So once this balance starts to get close to this red line, you need to think about irrigating. This is essentially the same thing in a graph form over a, a four week period. So as you can see, every time we irrigated, we bounced back up and then this is drawdown again. <clears throat> so you can go back and you can look at this for the last month and kind of see where you might have lost some yield. Well, we, we dropped right here below our allowable depletion. You know, we, we could have potentially lost some yield there. And that gives you a, a little better idea on, on how, you, how you've done in the last month or so. This is the farm summary page. This is the one that, that most of our producers use. They, they go in and they can look at each one of their fields together. And it's gonna tell them which day, by these, uh, these red X's that you see here, when they reach that irrigation trigger, when they're gonna hit that maximum allowed depletion, okay? So you can say, well, all right, field four, I'm gonna need to irrigate by Friday, but uh, I can let this uh, cotton field on 14 go in, up until next week, okay? So it gives them a, a better idea on how to schedule when they're gonna turn their wells on for each of these fields. So if you've got, say, two or three of these are on the same well, it can tell you when you need to hit which, which field first, okay? Let you, let you prioritize these things a little bit better. <clears throat> the, uh, the farm summary is going to assume that there's no rain in the next seven day forecast, okay? And it's going to take ET as a historical data, okay? So we've got well over several decades of historical ET that this is going to average from and predict ET for the next seven days, okay? <clears throat> and again, if, uh, if you don't see an irrigation here, you can swipe this across and see exactly what day you need to irrigate that field. So when you wanna add irrigations, you can add irrigation and rainfall. Rainfall is going to record automatically, but if you happen to have a rain gauge on your particular field and you say, well, National Weather Service said I got two and a half inches, but my rain gauge says I only got an inch and a half, okay? You can go in and you can change that. The blue here, as you can see, 0.4 inches came from the National Weather Service, but we only got 0.35 that time. So we can input that and it overrides what the National Weather Service said. 
And then you put your irrigations here over in the green column. <clears throat> Once you put it in, if, say you're furrow irrigating and you're putting out the same amount every time, you've got a surge valve, you've got a flow meter, you know exactly how much you're putting on, okay? You can put that in and when you go to tell it, tell the, the app that you irrigated again, that same value is going to be there. It said, well, you irrigated two and a half inches last time. We're assuming you're doing two and a half again, okay? If that's different, you can change that here. <clears throat> you click submit. Now, it's also going to give you a number of all the rest of your fields. And say you went through and you, you did this 12.1a, but you also did 12.1b at the same time. Okay, so you can click those in, and it's just a one-click stop. So just kind of streamlines the process, makes it easier on the person not to have to go through each individual field and check those things off. We do have a little bit of a glitch right now that we're working on that the first one stays clicked. Uh, you'd have to uncheck that automatically, but uh, we're hoping that's fixed before the start of this season. <clears throat> you also can print out a report uh, at the end of the season. Uh, there are some, some watersheds that are providing payment right now uh, when you present a report for these. <clears throat> so we have a lot of farmers that print their reports off every year, and it gives you the, uh, the date, your cumulative growing degree days, rainfall irrigation, ET, and your balance, okay? And it will tell you when you irrigated and if you got past the, the point. One of the, one of the handy things about this is, I'll give you an example. We are also doing a validation in furrow irrigated rice. And I set it up on a farm that we're not located at. It's a, it's a producer's field. And I, I set the app up for, for the producer and said, okay, you know, this is when it tells you to irrigate. We've got a six inch trigger, a 12 inch trigger, and an 18 trigger, okay? We set those all up. Came back and there wasn't a difference in yield for any of the validations. So I went back to the report and I realized that the producer was irrigating the six, the 12, and the 18 on the same day because it was easier, okay? Now that didn't help us in our research but it was easier on him to irrigate. So I was able to pick that up from the report, all right? So it gives you an opportunity, well, if I lost yield on this, on this particular field, I can go back to this irrigation report and see if water might have been the issue, okay? <clears throat> We've got a crop stage button here that's gonna track the, the heat units. Uh, you can see your, your H2O deficit on the, on the field detail. National Weather Service is going to give you a, uh, uh, a forecast for that particular area where your fields are. And tech support here is uh, Dr. Gene Stevens and my contact information, as well as the, uh, the assistant for the state climatologist. So if you do have issues with the app, you can get, get in touch with us at, at any time. And we also have a link to the, uh, the MU Bulletin and all the YouTube videos at that location. This is just a quick look at some of the uh, DD50 and DD60s uh, growing degree days. Uh, this is DD60s on cotton. So when you put your planting date in, it's going to start uh, calculating the accumulated DD60s. Okay? And it's going to tell you, based on this black box, where your, your crop should be. Okay? So if you click on this black box here, <clears throat> it's gonna pull from the Cotton Incorporated Bulletins, or the Cotton Council and the Cotton Foundation, uh, first 40 days. So it's gonna tell you some things you should be looking for in your crop at that particular time. <clears throat> uh, right now we're working on cotton. Cotton is pretty well done. We're finishing up corn and soybeans now, so the different crops that you, that you put in on each individual field you're going to be able to click on those and get scouting recommendations for each of them. <clears throat> so, now that I've talked to, to a bunch of people that aren't from Missouri, I'm going to tell you how this can work for you. Okay? We are also testing these, uh, these atmometers, which you can, you can put in each of your fields and, and get an ET. And it's going to give you an electronic ET measurement. Okay? So we've set these up, this is our weather station, one of our weather stations here in the background. We've set these up at each of our weather stations in Missouri and tried to track them 
their ET measurements against the, the weather station, okay? And what we found is that these atmometers run about 15% lower on the ET than our weather stations do, okay? So you can, you can take a reading from each of these, add about 15% to it, and that's gonna get you exactly what the, the state climatologist uh, recommended <clears throat> ET. So you can set these up in your fields uh, you would have to trick the system and tell the, them that you were in Missouri and just use your ET values and rainfall values. Okay, so that does give you an opportunity. Something that might be a little bit easier, uh, the University of Florida and University of Georgia have come up with a uh, website called smartirrigationapps.org. They have a cotton irrigation app as well as one for tomato and I think they're working on one for soybeans right now. Essentially the same thing as the University of Missouri app, but it uses the uh, National Weather Service FRET estimation of ET, so that's a future ET recommendation. It seems to overestimate ET just a little bit, <clears throat> so which in turn would cause you to irrigate a little bit more often than if you were using, say, the Missouri app. All right, but it is a it is a future ET system. So I just wanted to make you, you mindful of that. With that, I'd like to thank Cotton Incorporated, uh, NRCS, and the, the Howard Buffett Foundation for, for helping to fund this research. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. On the, the report, go mm -hmm. back to the report. Oh, go back one more. A while ago when you had it out there, what, what needed to irrigate this week and all that. Mm -hmm. At a point, can you print that out, that right there? In you case can. you wanted to give it to your farm manager every Monday or something like that. Absolutely. Okay. You can you can set that up. Now, you, you can print it from your phone if, you're, if your printer's got a phone print option. Uh, you can go, what we used to do, or we go to, we pull it up on the computer and print off each week. And then we can say, all right, we need to irrigate this field this day. Okay? So, just gives you a good opportunity. I mean, you, it helps us to say, oh, okay, we're leaving the university on Friday. We know we don't need to irrigate anything on Saturday and Sunday. We can start back on Monday. You know, oh, yeah. it's just very helpful for that, and it and it helps you to prioritize each of your fields. That's right. I thought that was a good a good tool right there. Mm -hmm. We uh, we started out with uh, twenty four. Uh, at a time, and I had a farmer come to me and he said, well, I have 180 fields. So we, we opened that up uh, pretty quick. So it's, uh, it's, it's been a handy tool and we've, we've had quite a bit more adopted over the past year. So, and we're, we're constantly working to validate all these use curves, uh, allow the depletions and root of death. So we're looking to make it as, as user friendly and as accurate as possible. It's going to beat the heck out of a notebook. <laughs> it, it does. Do you know of anybody else working on an app like you? Uh, the one in Georgia is is very similar. Like I said, it uses a different ET version. We've got right now, uh, Kansas wants to give us their weather station data so that we can start using that it there as well. That's, that's the issue that comes up. We we've got our, our weather station that sends us the data automatically. Uh, if we could get that opened up to, us, to other states, it would be a no-brainer to, to get all that done. So it's, it's just working with the other states and trying to get that information. Uh, a, a lot of your state climatologists like to hold on to that, you know? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So if, uh, if we can get that adoption, or if you've got weather stations in your state that, that throw up the ET just like Missouri's does, I mean, you can type that in. So you don't have to have an ET gauge at your field. You can take that information from your state and, and just plug it into the system and it, it will work exactly the same. On the app, did you say soil web Soil web was the was the one that I let me double check that, but I'm pretty it sure. It says CA Soil Resources Lab. Yes. 
Yes, that's the one. It's it's very simple app. You just you'll just hit find my soil wherever you are, and it will it will tell you the mapping unit exactly where you're at. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. If you have any other questions, I'll be around. So. <clears throat>